Welcome, everyone. This is exciting. Great turnout. Thank you all for coming out tonight. How many here have are somewhat just beginners with feng shui? Just somewhat beginners. Okay. And then how many here feel like they're already applying a lot of feng shui principles? Well, you're in the right space then. <laughs> this is wonderful. We'll be talking tonight about a few things. I'll do an introduction myself. I've got some visuals, so we are going to turn on this cool little projector. And um, I just didn't want to turn it on too soon and lose battery because I don't have it plugged in. So uh, we might have to dim the lights a little bit. It's just kind of fun to have a few of the visuals. So, um, and then I brought a whole bunch of visuals and I'm so not feng shui with what I got going on right here. <laughs> That's right. So, and you don't need necessarily to see the slide to know this part, but let me at least get this going. I'll, I'll, part of what I'll do is talk a little bit about myself. Um, and what my background is, and why is Pam Heggie speaking to you all about feng shui? And let me just figure out where this little button is without my reading glasses. <laughs> Hopefully I turned it on enough. Isn't this thing cute? It is cute. We are not here to talk about this little tiny cube, but we are talking, gonna talk a lot about um, clutter and simple. Simple, not so big, huge. And what All right. it's sitting on is not part of it. It's really just the tripod. It's just that? this little guy right here. It's okay. two by two, little cube. Uh -huh. And it'll fire up here in a minute. We'll just get it straightened out. Tried to make it so that the people sitting, you know, everyone could kind of see it. Let's make sure we have it angled right. It'll connect with my computer. Um, there's some chairs up here. And we can turn the uh, light so off. We might want to turn it down a little. Is that okay? Is everyone comfortable if we do that? I want to come in. There's a chair there. There's yeah, there's a whole bunch of chairs up front. I'll try and get my little clutter stuff go out of the way. I've got some things I'm going to give away at the end, so just a few little, just a couple little, nothing, not, not a big deal. We've got a drawing. All right, so for this, for the agenda tonight, I'm going to give a little about my background, why am I speaking about feng shui, and then just some basics on feng shui, and then maybe some tips that you can apply. Sound good? All right, Pam Aggie, my day job is working for Harbinger Partners. I'm just truly blessed to work for such a great company. We're an information technology staffing firm. I'm a big connector, love, love, love the company. My hobby is decorating. I love to decorate, right, love it. So if, if anyone here a golfer, right? Golfer or tennis player or whatever. We all have different hobbies, but you're not really trying to be a golf pro and you're not really trying to be a tennis pro. I am not trying to be a full-time decorator. I'm just truly just love it. When I, I previously, Jenny and I worked together, I was at Silverstone Group right. and I, um, <laughs> the word caught on how much I love to decorate and I had someone recommend to me uh, something about feng shui, and I'm like, feng what? And then I happened to be at a um, mall, and I walked into this store, Just wait, I was just waiting for a friend, and then I, I found, I don't know that this was it, but I found my first feng shui book, and I, it was bigger than this, it was more <laughs> important than this, it was like a big one, like, like this one. So it was a feng shui, feng shui book, and I, I noticed it had a lot to do with decorating. It had a lot to do with arranging space and furniture and all of that different stuff. So I bought the book, read it, bought another book, read it, bought another book, read it, signed up for a class at, um, I think it was Metro that I signed up for the class, just hungry to learn more about feng shui. I feel like I know enough for the basics. I'm not a pro, I'm not an expert, but it's just fun to know a little bit. Sometimes we do things intuitively and now I know sometimes to do things intentionally because I know enough about feng shui. So I'm hoping I can share that with you where you'll now do some things intentionally and you'll want to study more. That's our goal, okay? Good enough? Yes. All right, there was my background. Feng shui basics. Let's get into those. Okay, you've seen this symbol before, maybe not in the clouds like that. <laughs> but but chi is really like the, 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 chi is energy, right? It's what sustains us, right? Within energy, there's, there's yin and yang. 
So I'll give an example. When I was getting ready to, and, and there's differences, like one's night and day, one's calm, one's you know, maybe more um, happy or, is, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know what I mean? It's just a different type of energy. There's man, there's woman, et cetera. There's two types of energy, right? When I was getting ready to come here tonight, I was busy packing and, and hauling all this stuff to the car and my bonus daughter was taking a nap. I was yang and <laughs> she was yin, right? <laughs> she was relaxed, she was calm, but we all have that. So energy in our space is constantly moving, it's constantly turning, and it's constantly changing. When I explain the, the, the energy so you can truly apply it, it affects us emotionally, it, it, it affects our productivity, Right? It can affect our happiness. It can, ha it, it, it can affect our wealth. That's why it kind of crosses over to the technical side. So we'll kind of give some examples of how that can cross over. With energy, I'll, I'll give you an example of how energy can change how you feel, emotion. There is a walk that I like to go on. Molly will know this walk. We've probably walked it. Where, where we live in the same neighborhood, and where if you walk outside of our neighborhood, there's a neighborhood called El Dorado. And on El Dorado, there's El Dorado Drive. And when you're walking on the sidewalk, there is the street, El Dorado Drive. There's a strip of grass. There's the sidewalk, and there's grass. You all with me? You're walking this nice pace, and it's just beautiful. It's wonderful, and you're relaxed, and it's calm. And then you turn, and there's still a street. There's still grass. There's still a sidewalk, and there's still grass. Everything's the same. You're still walking the same pace. The only thing that's changed is now you're on Blondo Street. Mm. Right? So you go from being, oh, this is a nice little walk to, hmm, hope my eye doesn't get poked out with a rock. Right? Because <laughs> the energy changed. That's the only thing that changed. Another example I'll give you of how energy is real. It's the balance of wind and water is the whole feng shui, what that really means. The, another thing that will give you an example of how the energy applies. There is one of my favorite things to do is to be able to grab a chair or a beach towel, go walk in the sand, right? Sit on the beach and listen to the waves. Who doesn't love that? Like, don't you all love that? Now imagine doing that exact same thing during a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? And what's changed? Just the energy. So now that we know energy is real, it's alive, it's, it changes our emotion, what would you guess to be the biggest <coughs> killer, I'll call it a killer, of great energy in a space, a f tangible thing? What do you think it is? Okay. <laughs> that okay, but an actual thing. What it? What is? Um, not like a feeling or emotion, but with the, an actual thing. Death. A mess. Clutter. Who said that? Oh, clutter. Clutter. Yeah. Clutter. Yeah. clutter. Right. Clutter. Like literally, we can. Who here? I mean, we used to have a dog that when we would do vacuuming, he'd start barking because he'd know company was coming, right? <laughs> like, he would just know, right? He was just, like, programmed to just know somebody must be coming over. But who here doesn't have, like, that one closet or that drawer or maybe even a whole room or maybe a whole yeah. basement or something <laughs> that doesn't need cleaned, right? We all have that happen. And we can put it in a room <coughs> or we can put it away and we can get a buy with it when company comes because they might not see it. But guess who still knows it's there? We do. We do. Now, I was going to show you something. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see where that's at. Oh, shoot. Bear with me. Oh, oops. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> right? Let's not let that bother us. <laughs> it's already bothering you. I thought of you. I thought Rachel's going to hate this. Right? These don't belong on the floor. They don't belong torn out. You get my message. It's still messing with your head, isn't it? Because I only picked up one, <laughs> and there's two more. I knew that would get you, right? So I actually even said to Cindy, Cindy Tully, that would get her too. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to throw some paper on the floor. Please don't pick it up. Because <laughs> I knew that she, that would really bug her. But you get it. Like, it stays with you. So the biggest thing, if you learn nothing else tonight, know that clutter is real. Clutter affects your emotion. 
it affects your productivity. If you're constantly looking for stuff, it affects like truly it can affect your whole day and how much you accomplish and how effective you are. And clutter is not only in a space, it's also online, right? Look at all the storage units that we have that build up all over the place. Well, think of all the cloud storage, right? Well, we might be able to think through that we're physically going to go throw something away or go store something. But if we would just go through that and sort it, keep, you, know, you put away, you throw away, or you give away. Those are your little three piles. Just really constant routine of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> How's that working for you from an energy standpoint? <laughs> yeah. One thing I hadn't shared is I, I literally, about 20 years, started a little company called Room for Improvement. Still have that, where I help people kind of rearrange their things. I guess, a ho again, a hobby. And there was a, a lady that, that just wanted help with her family room. But I will tell you, she had a museum going on in this house, and they weren't using any of it. And they had two children, and I actually said to her, where do your children, like, I first asked her, where do you spend your time? And she had to think about it, because she's in the kitchen and she's in the bedroom. And then I said, well, don't you have children? And she said, yes. I said, well, where do they spend their time? And she said, hmm. She had to think about it. And then she said, well, either the kitchen or their bedrooms. And I, my next question was, do they ever have friends over? And I know the answer. There is no place for anybody to hang out at this house. They are not utilizing that house. It's just a storeroom for antique crap that nobody uses. Antique, nice <laughs> possession <laughs> use that nobody's using. Sorry. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. And my mom, like, seriously, she thinks she needs 10 things of China or whatever. It's like, she's never going to use them. Okay. One of the cool things about meeting here. I knew this room like would hold, like we're nice and t cozy, right? It works perfect. If, if truly 60 people would have shown up, that would have been a challenge. So, you know, we knew it's, and it's hard to predict, but this is what's so cool about Solve is they, it, I just really believe it's intuitive rather than intentional that they've used feng shui elements very nicely. Now the elements are wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Did I get them all? Yes. Okay. So what's that mean, right? So let me just kind of go through what those elements are. Because all of us deal with those type of elements every day, whether it's shapes of things or the literal, you know, all those elements, but you, they're everywhere. So that's where you kind of see when somebody can put all the colors together or something. Um, it just, somehow it just feels nice and it feels well put together. So on the wood, I chose this picture because I thought it'll help you remember that it's column shapes. Right? So it's trees, it's plants, it's browns, it's greens. Right? That's wood. Or literally wood furniture, anything, you know, with the wood. So that makes it easier. And then I have like fresh and silk flowers. I think it can be debatable about the silk flowers. Fresh is always better. If they truly seem real, then I personally bend the rules a little bit with that whole silk thing. Sometimes you have a basement or not enough light, and you also don't want a dead plant. Right? And then cotton or natural fabrics. Some people just like to um, do, um, what's the word I'm looking for when it's monochrom, is that the right word, monochromatic? Yeah. Where it's all the same color, but like you can do that. But there's different textures and there's different things you incorporate to still incorporate all the elements. Mm -hmm. Got that one? Mm -hmm. And then fire, it's more triangular. That one's easy enough, right? Because a fire is triangular. And then it's the reds, the red colors, candles, the lighting, sunlight, that represents fire. Electronic equipment fell in that category. And then animal prints. And then earth is represented by like that square and rectangular. Can everyone see this okay? Am I standing in people's way? Okay. It's just kind of fun to just be able to recognize that because we all utilize these elements in our spaces in some capacity. And it's kind of nice to know if you're using one or two that maybe if something fills off, maybe you need to add another element. Like if you're doing a lot with, with metal, um, let's get through them and then we can kind of go through that. So it's on, on the earth, it's literally anything earthy. How does and earth get to be square? You know, good question. Not sure. Mm -hmm. okay. 
<coughs> I am, I don't know the background on that. I don't, I don't know. That, uh, an expert or, or pro would, but I don't. But, How about um, animal prints and fire? I know, Is I've seen that danger? both ways, yeah. I'm not, danger? it seems like that one should be earth, because it seems to me like then the hide would go to earth, but I'm not gonna debate that. Okay. But yeah, no, I think that's a good question. Um, and you probably could find it different ways in different, depending on who wrote the, and we'll kind of get into that where there's the traditional feng shui and then there's the Western culture of feng shui too. So whatever, whichever direction you want to, and it might be different with those. I don't know. So you got this one, earth, and then metals, literally anything metal. And then for whatever reason, it's round or oval shapes. Got that one? and then water. That one seems so obvious. The one that really tripped me out when I was first learning feng shui is the colors that represent water. I would have thought it's blue yeah. or turquoise or whatever. It's really very dark colors represent water. Mm. And if you look at large bodies of water, they really are very dark, you know, unless it's a sh really shallow, but so really dark colors represent water or reflective surfaces. That's why I thought this picture kind of applied because you can tell it's reflective. So like a mirror, for example, mm -hmm. represents water. <laughs> now this one, I do have a handout in this concoction up here. Um, I have a handout that'll kind of give you this. So I don't need to hand it out now. Just know if you want one. It's not this exact slide. And actually, I'm not sure this shows up really good. But all of these kind of complement each other. So think of it in terms with these elements. I don't like when people look at their slide, but I kind of want to point, okay? So fire makes earth, right? We all know it's the ashes and then it becomes earth. And then earth creates metal mm -hmm. and metal holds on to water. And then water nurtures wood and then wood feeds fire. But then there's also the destructive way of, of those elements. So imagine if you had a log cabin house that, was, that had some drywall, so a few walls you would paint. What's probably the color you wouldn't paint all those walls if you were picking one color? Red. Red, right? Because fire burns wood. And it probably wouldn't feel that great, mm -hmm. right? You'd probably pick you know, I don't know, you could pick whatever, and then you'd probably do some mirrors or something that gives a little bit of that water flow kind of thing. But again, that's where the balance comes in. I hope that all makes sense. We won't spend a ton of time on it, but I want you to understand N on this one. And the one, the handout I'll give you does kind of show how the destructive piece is. So on earth dams water and water extinguishes fire and then fire melts metal and metal cuts through wood. So if you have too much of one thing going on, then kind of look at what that is and then you can kind of see how the elements, like something that's gonna make that room kind of come together or web design or whatever. We'll get into how they're, they're kind of comparable, but you kind of want them to all complement each other. Sometimes like there was a, a at Silverstone when I worked there, I, I was in the marketing area and, and they um, kind of gave us this space and then and and our CEO at the time said, okay, Miss Feng Shui, have at it. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, right? <laughs> How cool is that? And so I knew that we had a lot of metal going on because there was gray and white, gray cubicles, that was it. Like there were windows that could represent a little bit of the, with the sunlight coming in that could maybe represent the fire. But I knew that we needed some of that energy. We needed a little earth. We need a little wood, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where the color palette came from. And it really, truly created a space where people were like, when do we get color kind of thing. And so it was just kind of fun. But you can kind of tell if you have all of one thing, that then you might pick a different element to kind of pull out. Enough on the elements? You good? The Bagua map. There are two kinds of Bagua maps. Well, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but this one is the classical. And this one uses big words like north, south, east, and west. <laughs> We're not going to talk <laughs> about those big words. So the one that I really am more familiar with is the western one. But they're both seriously, they still have the same areas. Now, we're gonna, I will give you a Bagua map sample 
a handout as well. Is, is anyone familiar at all with the Bagua map? <coughs> okay. This, this I, I probably, um, this might be a little clunky, but we'll try and make this work, okay? I'm gonna kind of show you how these maps work. So in this map, first what I should point out, there's different areas in your home or in your environment or in your rooms, whatever, that have these energy centers and I'll show you, so like the ones we're going to focus on are wealth and prosperity, and we're going to maybe focus on the relationship corner. You can focus on any of them. Once you start learning about the Bagua map, please just focus on one or two. Don't try and focus on all nine all at the same time. That would be overwhelming. But there might be an area of your life where you're like, I really want to focus on that. Well, then kind of study that one, right? So how does this work? Here's how the Bagua map works. Here is my version of that Bagua map, just for pretend, right? This square with nine little parts. Here, we'll pretend this is my home. This is Pam's house. So how's the Bagua map work? Okay, so this is my house. This is my front door. Can everyone see that okay? So imagine that you take the Bagua map and you go over top of your house. So then I know in my house, this area right here Upstairs, downstairs, from my front door. You match the front door to the front door. And I know that area is probably the biggest concentration of wealth and prosperity. That's my biggest corner. So what corner in my home is missing when you compare that? Relationship. The relationship <coughs> one, right? So what can I do about that? Because obviously I'm married. I want to stay married. I want to stay happily married. Mm -hmm. Then I can look at the outside. I can incorporate the outside into, so like if your house is not square, um, just think of the include other areas. So there might be some things I can do to, to complement that. So wealth and prosperity would be things that um, represent wealth to you. And actually water is something, a feature that represents wealth. And, and the, the, the one I'm going to give you gives you some of this stuff written out. So it'll tell you. These are kind of some of the focus of color. These are some of the things you can do to highlight that area. Relationship, just think of things of two. If you're in a relationship, there's two of you, right? So one thing, if, if I have a single friend, which I do, that has one nightstand, I'm like, knock it off. <laughs> you want two, right? If you want a relationship, always remind yourself of that. Oh, it other, if somebody's invited into your home, they may notice that it, it just, just intuitively, right? So if there's a certain concentration, it's just a reminder to yourself. So now that we've covered the home, I want you to also think of that Bagua map in terms of, let's pretend like this, I have it like as an office, but oh, and that's the same color. Let me pick a different color. Let me pick, um, hold on. I'll pick light blue. So let's pretend, what room do we want this to be? Like a bedroom. Let's pick a bedroom, right? So then imagine that if the front door is here, then you take your Bagua map, and again, you would lay it over. So it's a room. It works over a room. So in this scenario, I might, you know, throw a plant in this corner or something like, you know what I mean? When I walk into the room, whichever one is the whatever. If this were a bedroom, I would place my bed, um, since energy is real, I don't want to miss this point because this is important on, on office and we'll go to office next. Since energy is alive, we all agree that it is now, right? After this story, what we just learned. So think of that then when you go into a space, a room, and I don't know how to do a diagram of this. I, if I had, um, so imagine that, you know, the front door, the door to the space is here and there's a big long table and all these chairs all the way around it, which one would be the worst chair to sit in, probably? The most uncomfortable one? The one right by the door. The one right by the door. <laughs> Why is that? Because you have your back to the door. Okay. It's always best to protect your back. Intuitively, we all just do that. We all feel comf more comfortable with that. Be intentional about it, <laughs> right? So if you're protecting your back, think about that in terms of when you're in bed. Are you going to be able to see someone enter? How's the energy coming in? So generally, you will want, I'm so sorry, my little templates. Here's my bed. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> so you would, if the front, if the door is here where my fingers are, you're probably not going to want your bed here, right? Can everyone see that? I'm sorry, but that's lower. You would probably want your bed about right here, or right here. But at least when you're looking towards your feet, you can see the door. Does you're going to feel more comfortable. What's that? Well, I would say you, you. It's best if you don't put furniture in front of the windows, but you totally can put w put furniture in front of the windows. My, I'm going to use this example. My mother. So imagine that this is her. She's she's buying a new house. Imagine this is her new bedroom. This is a really long hallway, right, to her new bedroom. There's a closet here. There's bathroom here. There's door here with all this energy. There's windows here, and there's windows here. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. We're pretending, right? Where the heck is she going to put her bed? Because I guarantee you, I do not want her putting it here. She will never sleep at night. Because all that energy coming down that long hallway. So it intuitively, she might have thought, oh, that's the wall for the bed because there's no <laughs> window. But I would be saying to her, no, no, no. No, I want you to have a good night's sleep. So I'm probably going to recommend that it's here. Or actually, for her, I'm probably going to recommend it's here so it's just truly easy access to the bathroom for her. So if the door were down where you had your finger, yeah. and there was a window on that wall and a window on the wall. I'd probably put it right here then. Yeah, I would That's totally put it right the there. Then I'd put it in front of a window probably. I wouldn't put it here. Or if you are going to put it here, there's corrective things you can do. I'd put something there that has like something taller to kind of block that, that energy. Anyway, let's go on to, and I'm sorry, I just want you to make sure you kind of understand how it applies at home. Because now let's go to the office. Okay, so imagine that same Bagua map, and now let's pretend this is the office, so we know the Bagua map goes all over the office. So with your desk, let's have the door at the same spot. With your desk, again, you always want your back protected when you can. So if you have a physical office, and if you can, you always want your desk someplace where your chair is here and you can watch the door. You see who enters it, right? So everyone gets that whole thing. So that one, again, it's just more, you probably wouldn't want to hear if the door's right there. I've actually seen that, and I've thought to myself that it probably would feel more comfortable to them if it wasn't there. I mean, you know what I mean? I, I probably personally would move it. And then sometimes we don't have a door. We have a cubicle, right? So what do you do then? I mean, your back's clearly not protected, right? So what you can do is you can do a corrective, you can put a mirror there, because then you can see behind you. You just don't want to be startled. That's the, that's the energy you're trying to, you just don't want to be startled. Okay? That work for everyone? Mm -hmm. Enough on the Bagua map for now? I do want to show this, I sh just more for a few houses, because I think it shows you how some things have changed. Remind yourself, and this will cross over to technical side too, like with web design. On a house, your front door, consider that your mouth, the mouth of the house, and the windows are the eyes. So <laughs> what do you want to invite in through your front door? A really cute guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Friends family, loved ones. So if you consider it like the mouth of the house, it's like, just like with your body, you want to invite in healthy, nutritional things. With your house, you want to invite in friends and family and loved ones, right? And so that's why the front door in feng shui is definitely emphasized. Here's another example. It was just a little bit different because the front door, you have to kind of walk along, but that was a good example of the front door. Here we are in Western culture. What's being emphasized? Garage. Yeah, what's that invite in? Cars. And? Dirt. And grease and <laughs> dirt, seriously. <laughs> dirt, grease, grime, fumes, all of that stuff, and we all do it, right? We all, we, uh, I shouldn't say we all, but a lot of us have that scenario. So, so what do you do about it, right? How do you correct that so you can emphasize? And what you want to do is really make the emphasis on your front door. Because you want to invite in friends, you want to minimize the garage, and you want to maximize that front door. Here's kind of another example. This isn't necessarily what you should do. In this particular example, I thought it was interesting that they emphasized what? The window. 
Doesn't that just say, hello, birds, fly on through? <laughs> See, to me, I think the way they could correct this is maybe some colorful vine or something that really emphasizes that front door or a lot of flowers, something like a, you know, kind of a purpley or bright fuchsia color flower or something, do you know what I mean, would maybe make that a little more corrected. Is that over in the Methodist Hospital? These were all online. I just pulled them off online. This one I thought did a nice job of actually de-emphasizing that garage. So that's why I wanted to pull this one out. This is just an example of how landscaping truly can change mm -hmm. the focus with the colors and the flowers. If you're in this scenario where my house, like how my house was, I don't know if I have that little handout. Um, and I'm sorry, I hope I'm not spending too much time on the decorative side of the home stuff. Because um, I know we're <laughs> here for technical stuff too. If this were... So let's say that this is my house now from the standpoint that, that this is my front door because it isn't too far off from there. My garage kind of sticks out, right? So then what we've done is we've taken our landscaping and intentionally come out this way. We put a, like a little front patio on the front and we intentionally brought that out just to correct that. Yeah. The garage still says, hello, drive on <laughs> in. But um, I, it really, to me, is distracting. There's a house that's in um, West Farragher's. hope no one's, how, uh, this isn't anyone's house. But the garage is actually, it's a raised ranch, and the garage is actually off to the side. And, so, and it's a beautiful home, but they painted the front door red, and they painted those garage doors red. Ooh. I kind of wish they wouldn't have done that, because it really kind of makes you want to drive on down that driveway, because it's so welcoming. Right, I just kind of wish, I felt like, you know what I mean, they could have de-emphasized them and versus highlighting them. Okay, here's some tips. Clear clutter. <laughs> I literally, I mean, doesn't that seem stressful? Yes. Right? <laughs> now we might not all be that bad, but that's still really stressful. That's kind of crooked, isn't it? That's probably stressing you mm -hmm. out, Rachel. But just I truly, <laughs> what's that? Did I make it worse? <laughs> <laughs> I did? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. So, I mean, the point, you guys, you get the point. How that stays in our head. You yeah. can't find things. It's not productive. So imagine that in your office environment, if you're truly not organized, and if you don't know how to get organized, ask someone that's truly, really organized for a few tips. Schedule a little time, a lot of little time on your calendar to totally go through that and think you're gonna get through that in a day. You're probably not, and it's gonna be overwhelming, and you're gonna be frustrated. Just literally take an hour or a half hour, take a chunk it, and start somewhere and start dwindling and working through it and get it organized. And a lot of that's probably stuff that either needs filed or thrown or shredded or whatever, mm -hmm. right? This one I uh, more showed because you wanna make sure the surfaces are clean and clear. It's kinda nice like if you can display like artwork or things of your kids, that's a nice energy. Um, put a mirror if your back's not protected. Okay, there were probably some more tips I was gonna point out, but I don't know what they were. And the computer, feng shui your computer. Um, you, the little things that you can do that can make a difference to your day or add passwords that are inspiring. You know, they're still protected, but maybe it's something complimentary to yourself. You're reminding yourself how cool you are with that password, right? Uh, clean out files online ones, utilize backups. You don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, if this computer crashes, what am I gonna do? Unsubscribe to those emails that you don't need. Mm -hmm. Like they're a big culprit of a lot of our day and our time and they just really zap a lot of our energy. And then synchronize applications. I intentionally left out, I'm not necessarily trying to promote Apple, but I will tell you from my standpoint, I love it that my phone and my iPad and my computer all talk to each other. So whether you have Apple or not, there are synchronization tools that you can utilize. Utilize them. Figure out what they are so that you're not constantly searching for stuff. All right, I'm going to go into websites now. It's not that far off from what we talked about with design. 
not going to go real deep on these, but I thought just giving you an example, we are talking about the digital world, right? Think of your website like your front door. And so I'm going to give an example and then clean the clutter. Now, these are not two sites. I'm, I just literally pulled them off the website. But which one kind of gives you a little anxiety? <laughs> right? Try not to do that to the people <laughs> visiting you. I just thought these were really clear examples yeah. of what are we doing and what are we communicating. And, and, and so be careful with all of that. I, and web design, this one I actually pulled from openspacesfengshui.com. I thought they had some really good tips and some good information um, where they say give your site good, good, good energy flow. I mean, you s just saw the example. There's clean and crisp, you know, crisp and then there's chaos. Uh, make your um, intention very clear, what, you know, what it is, you, you know, what your intention is with your website. Uh, integrate the five elements if you can. Um, and impart a sense of openness on your site and create ease of use. And then this one came from Feng Shui Aura. I also thought they had some nice tips. Um, simple and clutter-free. Again, that, cl that clutter is that big killer of good energy. And then the placement of, of things. Make it easy navigation for folks. The business logo, think of it in terms of your letterhead. Like it should be in a nice, clean spot, prominent, but not the whole, you know, it, it, it just think of it in terms of your letterhead. And then the colors on the web design should be a complement to your um, service. And if, you have, if you're starting a business and you have, you know, there's certain industries that might want to utilize certain colors. And I thought they had, I'm pretty sure it was that site, that had some really good um, information regarding colors and industries and that kind of thing. The Feng Shui Aura site? Yes, I'm pretty sure it was that one that had the nice information regarding that. One of those two sites did. I, I almost included it on here, but I just thought I'd just point it out and give you that reference. <coughs> so recap. Create good energy for enhanced health, wealth, and happiness. The Bagua map is a tool, right? The elements, um, just reminding yourselves of the elements and how to apply those. A cluttered space can either attract or keep the energy of wealth. And then utilizing tools and technologies that help organize and save time will enhance the energy and contribute towards your greater success. Thank you for joining. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. Are there are there any questions that come to mind that we didn't cover? Would you ever in the bedroom scenario, you know, where you had windows here and windows there and the door was over here, would you ever put the bed at an angle mm -hmm. facing the door? Yeah, you totally yeah, can. Mm -hmm. From an angle standpoint, this is maybe, a night you could totally do that. I personally struggle with that because I want two <coughs> nightstands, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's hard to do that when it's angled, right? But, um, but no, you could totally angle the bed. I, I know that like even like with a desk, if you're, when you're walking into your office, just be careful of the corners, like how you angle something that when you walk in, it's not, the corner's not pointing at you. So like you wouldn't want, your, I wouldn't want to walk in my door and have my desk pointed like that because it's like a cut. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You want it welcoming and open and as opposed to cutting. I hope that's helpful. What about the colors in, in the Again, Bagua map. Oh, the Bagua map? How do you do so many different colors within the house? And you don't have to. There's different things. I mean, the colors that they emphasize, you can do. But remember, there's other things in, um, that can kind of represent different energies, too. Or like what I'll do, I won't always. Like, I'm not going to go paint some room yellow because it happens to be in that space, right? Mm -hmm. But I might bring out something like a little vase or something to emphasize something. If that's an energy in a space that I'm trying to kind of focus on, then I might bring it out in little ways. It doesn't mean you have to paint every room that color. And I will get those handouts for you, too. So anybody interested, I'll just, I can even set them in the back or something. I think those will give some good tips. And again, I just pulled that from the internet. I thought it was a pretty good one. The image isn't perfectly clear. I mean, it's clear, but it's a little fuzzy because I pulled it off of there. But I wanted to, I just thought it was a really good one to kind of give you a lot of information about that Bagua map. 
we've actually had this conversation, pieces of it over time. Yeah. Um, obviously, Feng Shui is different for different people. Yep. And when you're incorporating multiple people into one space yep. and coming up with that balance of what works or not, do you have tips for that? Because like even like what she was talking about, you know, doing things at an angle. I live with someone who would never, ever put something at an angle, whereas yep. I would to open up a room. Right. But their thinking, their feeling is they they get feel out of place if not. Yeah, if it's not synchronized. And things like that. Yeah. And we're kind of got a lot of people coming and going in my house right now. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that, blending multiple things? Like yeah, I think just keep in mind that energy. Like, how is the energy um, circulating? Like, I helped a friend recently, actually. She has a living room that she wasn't utilizing. You know, it just had a couple chairs and a little coffee table in it. She bought new furniture. Um, and that she really liked, but then when I came over and she wanted help with it, she's like, oh my gosh, it just got delivered and it's just way too big for this room and I'm not sure I like it. And immediately what I noticed is that the, the I, I'm so sorry, I wish I had like a, um, uh, a flip chart so you could just got to go with me. Go with me here. So you walk in the front door and there's the big opening to the living room, right? I noticed the chair was right there. Right? Well, there was a doorway right beside the chair, and then there was a love seat right here. So I knew immediately what it said to me is any conversation is going to get cut by anybody walking through. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. You want your conversation area together. You don't want that energy disrupted. If we're having a conversation and that's the walkway, this is going to be disrupted, right? So then it might be better if this is the seating area and the walkway is there. So just keep that in mind. So sometimes it's just truly how the energy is flowing in that space. Did she keep the furniture? She did. It actually looked beautiful. We just moved a few things around. Um, literally, like, we moved some things around, and she's like, I love this space. But, but the thing is, you always know, too, in any space, like an office is an e is easy one, right? Because you know what you're trying to accomplish in there is business and productivity and getting things done. So that one's probably easier. But sometimes our homes just have that room where you're like, mm, <laughs> not real sure what I'm doing with that space. Well, define it. What is it you want from that space? And then it makes it easier. This particular individual had, I think, 18 albums, family albums, and they were kind of all over the place. And she loves them. That became that space the family goes to to look at family photos. So we made sure the storage was there, that all these albums could be put in that room. And so that space now has a purpose, and it's being utilized all the time. But I think that's the big thing, is what are you trying to accomplish with that, with that area? And what are you trying to make happen? And sometimes that's hard for us to define, especially if we've lived in a place a long time, then rethinking how we utilize that space. Um, is a little bit harder sometimes. So truly just think, if it's just storage and you're not utilizing it, how much are you willing to spend on storage per square foot? Because your house is probably worth at least $100 a square foot. How much are you paying for that space you're not using ever? Mm -hmm. It's not like it's not costing you. It's totally costing you. On the office, what did you say for tips of organizing your office? With organizing an office, well, I don't know. I mean, literally, I think from a functionality standpoint, like you really want it to be as clean as possible, right? And so with so much online technologies, how much paper do you really need? Do you have to print everything or is there an online version? And, and I don't know the answers to all that because some of us have different, different functions and different ways we do things. So a lot of what gets us in our offices is the paper. I, I helped a lady once, a friend, that literally I walked in her office. I'm not making fun. I did kind of laugh, didn't I? Because this is just kind of funny. She had two desks. Like, her office had a lot, a lot. But right, like, you walk in the door, and then there was this desk, and it had a laptop. And then, like, she had a writing desk over here. And, and I asked her about functionality. What do you want to make happen in this space? Well, she kind of wanted a place that she could relax a chair, right? So that was obvious. We need to find space for that. And she loved the writing desk because she could look out to the park and she used that desk a lot and it was a nice cute little desk. And when I asked her about this other desk and what she utilized that for, well she utilized that for like paying bills and the computer work. And I said to her, it's laptop. 
do you need that desk? You could maybe do that. And I just helped her process through where else could you maybe do that? Could you do that anywhere else? And literally she freed herself to get rid of that desk and it just opened up that space and she brought in a little lounger thing where she, could, and she loved her office. So sometimes we just have to rethink our own process. How are we getting through things and what is it that will make us more productive? And the more productive and the more you know, time we can cut out of our day, the more work-life balance we'll have, the more you know, wealth and happiness. And that's really our goal, right? I live in an older home in yeah. the urban area. Yeah. And the rooms are so compact. Yeah. There really is not a lot of extra space. So when you buy a piece of furniture, yep. you have to consider exactly where it's going to fit. And don't buy furniture with rolled arms. Yep. And the furniture has to s also suffice as storage yep. a lot of times. So what can you do when there's really not an option for moving things around? They seem to have where they need to go. Yeah. It probably depends on how willing you are to um, rethink the furniture you, you're utilizing, right? So if you're limited on space because of the size of the furniture, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know until I yeah. see that space. Yeah. I, I, I've truly struggled with it myself. I, I, we're in a blended marriage, and um, my husband moved into the house. We've been married 10 years now. And my husband moved into the house that I had occupied with, with my daughter. And so there were things that were just intuitive, right? If he's going to come in with this household of stuff, I'm going to make room. And so, you know, there were things I did, like take pictures off the walls and all that, and anything that was put back on um, was our family forward, right? But then all this furniture came, and he had um, a wingback couch from Ethan Allen, and wingback chair, or a, a camelback yeah. sofa, uh, wingback chairs, cherry wood. Um, I, and, and so I have successfully transitioned some of that furniture <laughs> to its next um, home. And other I'm still dealing with, right? That same, oh, this space isn't working because the furniture's not right. But then it's that mm, delicate little cycle of, um, <coughs> so, you know, sometimes you just have to rethink it and um, be creative. I don't know that I'm answering your question, but without seeing it. I the dining room and kitchen space where it is today from when you were originally there. I mean, that was pretty dramatic. Yeah. But that you were talking about how much you're willing to do. You were you had a vision. Yeah. And her, that space is beautiful if you ever see it. It's just absolutely. Beautiful. And that Camelback sofa is a perfect dog bed in our bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I know that's bad. I put covers on it and stuff, but Casey loves it. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, it worked because I didn't have to get rid of it, right? And so you just kind of rethought it. Um, and again, I protect <laughs> it, but it's, yeah, seriously. Um, thank you all. I really appreciate that Solve was able to, to host us tonight. I really appreciate all of your time. I hope this was helpful, excuse me, helpful to you all. Um, and then I hope you, I've inspired you to know that energy is real. It's truly, you know, it's alive. It's invisible, but it's real. And it does affect how you feel emotionally and I hope that I've inspired you to continue learning a bit about feng shui because it is pretty fun it's not some scary religion or anything like that <laughs> it truly is just energy um, yeah you were excited about having it in this particular space because of yeah. the way that they utilized yeah. it is there anything that we should be noticing as we, you know, go get well, something else to eat or on our own? Yeah, way? absolutely. Just look in their offices, the way they've used throw rugs and the way their office, their desks are wood and their art and all the color. And I've just thought they've used elements very nicely. Like even here, you know, this would represent metal, right? And then bringing in the blue, it's kind of a dark blue. It could be water, I suppose, but I still would consider that probably wood. And so it's just little things like that that's kind of nice how they've utilized the elements. Um, and I especially feel like in the offices, they've just done a fabulous job. Hmm. My last slide. You know, the whole energy thing, uh, farmers know that uh, if, there, if there's going to be a storm rolling in, that's when all the, you know, the babies are going to arrive. My daughter was scheduled for a C-section on March 11th, but on Saturday when the storm was rolling in, Aww. little um, Michael Gabriel <coughs> arrived. Aww. Oh, hold on, hold on. There he Aww. is. Aww. 
And I'm pleased to say that's where I'm sporting my little bracelet because he's in the NICU unit, but I'm so thrilled that he got off the little ventilator yeah. thing today. Um, and so we're thinking there's a chance he might get out of NICU um, this weekend. Yeah. So he's doing really well. So I brought, in addition to your little feng shui things, I had to bring you all a little Hirsch he bar, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it's my version of a cigar. And if you don't smoke a cigar when you get it, you don't have to eat the candy bar. But <laughs> so I have one of these for everyone, and then I have the Bagua map, and then I have the other little piece.